What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be showing you how to do a quick edit. So this isn't going to be a poster design tutorial. I thought I'd show you something a little bit different, you know, because it does get a little bit boring. Um, so basically I'm going to be showing you how to edit an image ready to use in a poster. So I know I've done this before, but there's a few techniques that I've learned since that I think you could really benefit from. And basically everyone has their own editing techniques and stuff. So I just thought basically that, um, if I show you my way, you know, you might learn something from it and it, it makes a little bit of a change from just doing poster designs. So obviously you really enjoyed the um, the Instagram posts video. So hopefully there will be more of that to come. I've got a few little ideas in mind. So obviously this weekend we had a few games. So there's obviously loads of different posts that I can do. So if you have any like, you know, you want to see, you know, uh, at me in them on Instagram. So, you know, my link's down below. So just at me in them and I'll save them and then see if I can make them for you. So that's obviously going to be a good series for the channel. You know, I'm going to be doing many videos of that, but obviously I don't want to keep it, you know, keep doing them. It gets a bit boring after a while. So if we mix it up a little bit, but I'll keep doing the, um, the Instagram post. So thank you for the support on that. So today, we are going to be doing this edit here. So obviously I've got an image of Son. So recently I've made a poster of him. So this is one of the images that I had to use, but for that, um, for that poster, I didn't have to edit the image because it was sort of like a comic, um, sort of style. I'll pop it up on the screen and then you can go look at it on Instagram if you want. So what I would normally do if I was going to do an edit like this is start editing the image before I actually cut it out and put it into the design. So the main thing about this is you don't want to, um, you don't want to cut him out before you've edited the image. So you edit the image first. So what we're going to do, we're going to just unlock that background and then convert this to a smart object. And this is key because you want all the layers to be inside this smart object. So we've got this one here. We can name him Son and that's all good. So now what we're going to do is add a thing called neural filters. So if you go to filter and then neural filter, you'll see it right there. Um, you click this and then this little tab on the right side will pop up. So there's lots of different things you can do with this. There's some weird things. Um, so you can, you know, smart portrait, you can change his expression or something like that. Once it actually loads, you might see it in a minute. I don't know if it's going to work because his hand's in the way. Um, but this is a be happy one. So as you can see up in the top right, it's sort of loading. So it's obviously doing something to the design. It might not even make a difference because he's already smiling. Um, but once it does load, um, you can see sort of it's made his whole mouth smiling. Um, so if I turn that off, there you go. Obviously, it changes his face and everything. Um, but we we don't want we don't want this because obviously his hand looks really weird. Um, so we're just going to turn that one off. So what you want, turn Smart Portrait off. The main one you want to go to is JPEG Artifacts uh, Removal. So this is going to take away all of the pixels that are on this on this image. So obviously, if I zoom in. There is going to be little pixels and pixelation, like by his finger here on his hand, um, there's going to be pixels. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this on and you can change the strength if, depending on how harsh you want this to be. And once it loads, you'll be able to see the difference that it makes. So it's going to be sort of smoothing out the image and getting rid of all the, um, the artifacts. Once you've got rid of all the artifacts, obviously, as you can see now, it looks a lot smoother. But obviously, when, when we go through the editing process, we're going to bring the texture back in. So you don't need to worry about losing any texture. So if I um, do a side by side, that's before, that's after. As you can see, it sort of just it just makes it all a little bit smoother, um, basically just better. So if I click OK for that, that's great. So we've got that on there now. So if you wanted to paint away little bits, you've got your little layer mask there so you can go and paint away bits of it. But that's all we need to do for that bit. So what we're going to do now, we're going to convert this to a smart object as well. Let's convert that to a smart object. Let that load. Um, once that's load, loaded, um, now we're going to go to filter other high pass. Now, obviously, we're going to be pretty used to this one. This is pretty similar, like we use this a lot. So we're going to have the radius on two points and then click OK. Now, obviously, as you can see, it's covered the whole design, so you can't really see anything. So what you need to do is go to where high pass is, bottom right, and click this double line, two arrows, um, and then you get this little menu here. Once you've got your little menu, you're going to change the blending option to overlay. So do that. Now, as you can see, um, if I turn this on and off, see we're bringing back some of that texture that we were on about so this is why you don't really need to worry about it so the JPEG artifact removal gets rid of all the pixelation and then you can add your texture in and it makes the image look a lot cleaner so we've got that now next thing we're going to add is an unsharp mask so all the way down here unsharp mask and this is going to be 20 2.0 and 0 so click OK for that now you're not going to see much of a change there it's just going to be a little effect but once you use camera or filter at the end of this you'll really see it because it does make it pop. And the last one we're going to add 
is going to be a camera or filter. So this one's just gonna be a really basic camera or filter because we're gonna add an extra one after this. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna reduce the um, highlights, reduce the shadows, increase the shadows, um, and basically have them on plus 30 and minus 30 for both, 20 clarity, and a little bit of sharpening, and that's it. So that's all you need to do for that bit, and, and that's it, you're all good for that bit, so that's all done. And now what we're gonna do is add some shadows in. So we're gonna convert that to a smart object again, keep all of that inside the smart object because it makes it a lot easier to work with. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new layer, clip and mask it to this one, um, then we're gonna go to edit, fill, 50% gray, and overlay that and we're going to use our dodge and burn tool so burn tool first for the shadows dodge tool for the highlights so do shadows first it makes it a lot easier now you're probably thinking jesus christ joel this is like a lot of you know a lot of stuff to do just for one image and yes i do agree with you but one thing i have learned um in my short period of time editing designs is that you need to take your time with the images because once you use the camera or filter at the end the images are going to be the main thing that stand out so um if you take your time with them, you're going to have a better design. If you don't take your time with them, it probably won't be as good as it could have been. It might still be really good, but it won't be as good as it could have been. So obviously you're going to want it to be as good as it could have been. So that's why you need to take your time. But as you can see, um, I'm adding in some highlights here. Well, shadows, I should say, just to make the shadows pop a little bit more. Once you use the camera filter, you'll be able to see this a lot better. Obviously, it's going to be an important part of the design because you want his shirt to sort of pop out a little bit. You don't want it all to blend into one thing, so it just looks a bit boring. Um, so that's that. And don't worry about getting it on the background, because obviously we're, we're going to have to cut him out eventually. So I'm not going to do the cutting out, but eventually you will need to cut him out. So you don't really need to worry about the background for this. This is why it's quite a good sort of like technique to learn. So if I turn this off, there you go. You can already see it's making it a lot more defined. And now we're going to add some dodge tool. So obviously dodge tool, this is just going to be highlights. So you can go for a little bit bigger brush here. We're just going to go around the edges where it's highlighted. Obviously, just follow the light that's on the image. Go around him and add some more highlights in. Now, it's going to be a little bit harder to see here because, obviously, um, he's wearing a white top. So, I didn't pick the greatest image for this dodge and burn tool. But, I mean, it's good enough. So, you don't really need to add many highlights anyway because, obviously, in your design, if you've got a light source or something like that, you're going to add more highlights anyway. So, you don't really need to worry about that. Um, this is just an extra little technique that you can learn. So, that's that, guys. Let's go dodge and burn. Oh, I'll put doge. <laughs> there we go, dodge and burn. And now we're gonna convert that to a smart object. And now guys comes the final bit. So obviously we've done most of the editing here. So if, you, if I go back through and run it back, you'll see that we actually have made a lot of difference. So I'm just gonna go and go to my downloads now and open this image up again. If I just put this down here, you can already see that there is a difference in the image. Obviously, let me just fill it, make it fill the screen. Let's go on and off, see? You've got way more shadows, it's way more crisper. It's just a nicer color as well. So we can delete this one now. Um, and what we're gonna do now before we do a camera or filter is we're gonna add a curves layer. Now this is gonna be for the eyes and teeth. So you're gonna add a really bright little bit of curves, invert the mask. So Command I or you know Shift I, I think it is on Windows and you invert the mask so it's black. And now what we're gonna do is get a hard brush. We're gonna go back in and we're gonna paint over his eyes. So as you can see, it's making them a lot brighter, which is exactly what you want. Um, let's just make sure we get his eye. You don't wanna make, don't get any of his skin in because you don't need the skin. Um, but you wanna make sure you get his eye, just like that. That's good. And now, oh, we can do the teeth as well. Aren't The teeth aren't all, always necessary, but if they're like quite prominent in the design, like you can see a lot of them, then I recommend doing the teeth just because it'll make it all look a little bit better in the end. Let's go around here, do that. There we go. Um, and now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add a hue and saturation. And what we're gonna do is reduce the saturation to zero, increase the lightness a little bit, and then convert, invert the mask, go back in. And what we're gonna do is start painting this so it's black and white. Now, you may think this looks really weird, um, but trust me, once you actually use the camera or filter, it looks really good. It looks so much better than if you had like a, some yellow teeth there and it, it, it will just make your design look a lot better basically. Now you don't have to do this bit. This bit's sort of an extra bit I'm just throwing in there. So 
looks a lot whiter. Obviously, you don't want the lightness too much. You can maybe decrease the curves a little bit so they're not too bright. Um, but what you want to do is make sure you get the whites on the eyes. If I just change to a white, there we go. So we can go around like this. And then we go back around to his eyes, the actual pupil, and just color that back in because you don't want to lose the color of his pupil. So same again here. Let's get the white in. There we go. Nice. That's good. So as you can see, it pops a lot more, doesn't it? So if I turn these off, yeah, pretty boring. Turn them on, looks a lot better. So that's 100% better. Um, and then we can convert this to a smart object now. So that's that done. Now the last thing we're going to do guys is a camera or filter. Now this is personal preference, so I'm going to edit this how I would normally. Um, so let's go in here and sort of have a look at the colors. So what I would do usually is bring the contrast up probably to about 40, exposure maybe up about 20, and then do the same thing as I did with the shadows and highlights again. Once we've done that, we can start looking at the texture. So you want to bring a bit of texture through, but you don't want to blow the image out. So probably somewhere about 30 is good. Um, as you can see, the, the eyes are looking a lot better now, aren't they? They're looking way more poppy. Uh, clarity you can bring up to about 30 as well. And then a bit of dehaze, I would say, to about 5. Now, vibrance and saturation depends on your images, depends on the image you're using, really. So um, I usually bring the saturation up a little bit to about 10, and then the vibrance down to about minus 5, usually, because it, it just... You don't want it too warm because obviously if I put the saturation up, it's going to make his face look yellow. Um, so you don't really want that. So that's probably fine for now. Now curves, you want to use a simple, probably a simple S curve like we usually do. Um, so that's nice. And you can leave that. You can play around with the colored ones if you want, but I'm not going to do that. Sharpening, you can bring this up to about 110. So this is this is a good sort of good... Um, I don't know the word, but it's a good uh, area to put the sharpening at. Um, and then noise reduction, you can probably put this up to about 30. Same with color noise. And now if you want a bit more texture coming through, you can reduce this down to about probably about 15. Um, but sometimes people want like a really like sort of soft glowy effect. So uh, I, if you want that, put it to 30. Um, but for now, it's obviously looking really good. Color mixer, now this depends on your image. Again, obviously if you want it a bit more lighter blue like I do with the blues on here, um, you can change that. And then same with the yellow, you can make it a little bit more orange. Obviously you don't want to do it too much because his face is going to go a little bit funny. Change that a little bit. Skin tone, you can obviously make the reds pop a little bit more. Um, bring it a bit more orange. Uh, but I'm gonna, probably going to put it to about minus 13. Saturation, obviously you can bring this up as well, depending on what you want in your image. So let's get the blues up a little bit, that's good. Color grading, now I don't really touch this until the end of the video, so you don't really need to worry about this, but for, for the sake of it, I would probably just go with what's on his shirt, so that sort of color, um, and probably just go for like a bluey color, because it always looks nice when it matches the shirt color. So something a little bit like that, but you can even go for a little bit warmer on the shadows. Um, now optics and geometry I don't really touch so I don't really mess around with that. Now grain I would probably probably leave this until the end so when you've finished your poster that's when I would use the grain um, but I would use a little vignette just to bring it in a little bit so about 10 there we go. Now calibration so you can bring these up a little bit that's good. This looks like a really nice image now I wish I would have edited it before I'd uh, made my poster design probably would have looked a bit better but obviously if we go back to the start, you can see what we've done. So if you want to add a little bit more dehaze in now, you can. Um, you can go back and play with some of these, like clarity and everything, depending on really what you want. I'm going to put that to 15 now. Texture, I might bring up a little bit more to about 60 maybe. Exposure, maybe up a little bit more to about 30. Contrast, do I want it up? Do I want it down? Probably about 50 would be a good, or 40. Yeah, let's go to about 40. Obviously, the vibrance we've got down at about minus 11. I think that looks really nice. So if I brought this up, see, it looks really blown out. So about minus 10 is good. And now if we do a before and after, as you can see, this image looks way better. So, you know, that was just like, what, 10 minutes of editing? Yeah, I know it's a lot for one image, but if you want your poster to look really good, trust me, this is the way to do it. So it may take a little bit longer, but it will enhance your images so much. So trust me, I would really recommend doing it. Um, I'm just going to click OK with that now. Um, let the editing add on. And there you go. You've got your editing on there. Um, you can turn it off whenever you want. 
turn it back on whenever you want and then it will sort of just you know apply where it's needed so now I would do the cutting out phase because obviously you've got your image all edited and everything ready for your design so basically guys this is how I edit my images at the moment this is always changing always you know finding new techniques but hopefully you've learned something from this hopefully you've learned a new technique that you didn't know before um, if you have then leave a like let me know in the comments what you want to see more of obviously the Instagram post will be coming back probably next week I would say so I'm back at uni now it's a little bit more busier but I'm trying to get a video out every week for you guys it might be a bit late sometimes but I'm just trying my best okay so thank you for all the support in the recent videos and I'll see you in the next one.